Now let's find some more torques in the system. Well, of course, we have to talk about the tension. Uh, the tension force. Because, I mean, the tension is what's actually torquing that disk. It's the tension that's driving the motion of the disk. We have to talk about the tension. For the t no, we don't. Because okay. the tension is internal. It's only the external torques that matter, not the internal torques. The system is the mass, the rope, the mass, the rope, the mass. The tension is completely created by the rope, which is part of the system. So we don't think about it. It's weird because, yeah, it's the tension that's actually applying a torque and turning something. But we took care of that when we did this external torque. It's really this external torque that drives the tension that turns everything. So that's why we just did this for mg. We don't need it for t. And you could say, well, we could have just said mg, it's that, is that. But then also, remember, this thing is accelerating. So we actually don't know the tension automatically. We can get it later. But right now, you can't just say the tension is equal to m1g because the thing is falling. So it's actually the best way to get that torque, is, well, the only way, is directly from the force m1g. Tension is internal. We don't need it. OK, so now let's do, uh, what are we left with here? We've got the weight on uh, mass 3, m3g. And we have the normal force. It's tempting to say, oh, those cancel. You don't need those. Well, they cancel, but they're applied at different places relative to the axis. All right? Applied at different places relative to the axis. Therefore, cross product might not cancel. We better check. Let's check as a geometrical exercise. So let's first do M3G. Here we go. Uh, one thing that we don't have to do with this problem, but we're going to do is we're going to have the string at the level of the center of mass of the block. Right? Think about it. If the string were up here, it would kind of be pulling the block over. Now, it might not tilt. There would be extra torques and friction or something. Eh, let's not. I don't want to get into that. Let's just, for simplicity, say the string is pulling along the center of mass of the block so that it pulls it nice and level and doesn't tend to further complicate the problem. Right? So string at COM level. All right, so there it is. OK. Let's see. So let's just draw the forces we got to think about. Um, I think I won't mess up my diagram. You can work on your visualization here. I'm going to draw the R vector. And notice it's not flat, because our axis of rotation is not the top of the disk. It's the center of the disk, center of mass of the disk. So R looks kind of like this. For this calculation, that's R. And uh, M3G, straight down. Right, we've got to draw them tail to tail. M3G. All right. So we need that cross product. And it's equal to simply R M3G times the sine of the angle between them. R M3G times the sine of theta. Right? That's the torque. But what I'm going to do is not define theta as the angle all the way between them. I'm going to make, just for my own mathematical convenience, I'm going to make theta here the angle to the horizontal. And then, of course, in the cross product, I have to put the full angle. Right? I have to put theta plus 90 degrees. So I made that where it's horizontal, and it's perpendicular to that. Right? And also, if we want to get the sines right, this is clockwise, so it's positive. So I'm going to say sine of negative theta plus I'll be advanced and do it in radians. So hopefully you agree that's correct. It's a negative angle because we're going clockwise. It's the angle theta as I defined it here plus pi over 2. OK. So well, sine of negative x is negative sine of x, right? Sine is anti-symmetric. So I'm going to go ahead and for now, I'm going to right now pull out that negative r. M3g sine of theta plus pi over 2. OK. And what is the sine of theta plus pi over 2? It's the cosine of theta. The difference between sine and cosine, factor of pi over 2. So it's minus r m3g uh, cosine of theta. And I set it up this way because I can, get, I can deal with this theta. Right? This theta makes a nice right triangle. And let's find it. Where's the triangle we care about? Well, we know. Uh, we did this vector, and we have an r vector going up like this. We know this is the radius of the uh, disk. And we know this is a line. All right, and we know this theta is also that theta. So what is the cosine? Uh-oh. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. 
right? So R is the hypotenuse. Big R would be useful if it were the uh, sine, but we switched to cosine. Feels like we kind of messed it up. Well, let's define a new, a new uh, distance here. We'll say, let's define something from the axis of rotation to the center of mass of the block where, that's, where that is uh, defined. And I call that, I called that big L in my notes here. Okay. We just gotta make up yet another variable. So L is this side of the triangle, so the cosine is adjacent uh, L over little r, L over r. Right. So we do see then, the one thing we get out of it is we do cancel the little r. And we still get something in terms of the parameters of the system, just not big r. Okay, that's fine. So the torque then, due to M3G, it's external, because it's gravity acting on it, is minus L M3G. Okay, <clears throat> so we might be worried that's actually gonna change in time, it's not gonna be constant, what a mess, but let's calculate the torque due to N, the normal force. All right, normal force, we can assume, pretend it acts at the center, I mean it does act at the center, just opposite to M3G. Uh, what is the magnitude of the normal force? It's M3G. Right, because we know if we were to do this independently, think about the y motion of this block, it's not moving in the y, it's not accelerating the y, those two forces have to cancel. The tension is lateral, okay? Well, let's go ahead and just keep calling it n for now. Let's see, so if we were going to draw our vector diagram here, well, let's see, this is being applied actually down, right? The r vector is gonna be from the axis down to there. All right, so there's r. And uh, the normal force is straight up like that, normal up like that. And I'm gonna pull the exact same trick, right? We're gonna, I'm gonna call it theta, it's a different angle. So r and theta are changing with every calculation, but there's theta. And I'm gonna say the torque due to n is r, or is um, the force, n, no, r uh, times the force n times the sine of the angle between them, but it's not theta, it's theta plus 90, plus pi over two. Oh, okay, now a similar set of tricks equals r times n, that's actually cosine of theta. It's positive because it's counterclockwise, and now we say what is the cosine of theta? Equals r times n. What is the cosine of theta? Uh, ah, ah, there's L. Right, there's that, and L, we're also saying it applies at the center, the same point as the center of mass here. So that means that um, we have this distance, which is not just R, big R. Right, we don't know what this distance is, it depends on how long the hinge is. But the good news is we don't care, we just care about this distance L, which we know. Right. So the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, L over R, boom, boom, and it's L times N positive because we're going counterclockwise. But what did we say N is? N is Mg, all right? It's L Mg. And it's all this has been M3, right? So it's L times M3G even. So back to the first thing we said, oh, the M3G and the Ns are gonna cancel. But in terms of torques, do they cancel? Oh, they actually do, right? So you can see that the torque due to the weight plus the torque due to N equals zero. They do cancel. And now we've done this trick multiple times. Now I'm gonna tell you how to use it in general. Multiple times we sort of made up a little theta, we've made it up, we put in some parameter, and it makes R go away. And it gives us the answer in terms of something simpler. So let me show you sort of the way you can do that more quickly. And the way this problem is done without nearly as much work is Let's just imagine you have your axis of rotation here in this plane. So this is a rotation axis right there. I won't put an arrow because I'm about to draw vectors. Okay, there's your rotation axis sticking out of the board. And let's just imagine a bunch of force vectors. Force one, force two, force three, force four. And we want to calculate the torques of each one of those. So each one you could calculate, say, well, it's applied here and there's R, and you go through all that rigmarole again. It's applied here, there's R. It's applied here, there's R. But you don't really have to. What you can do is draw a line along the force, 
and then the torque will be the uh, will depend on this distance. Right? Take that line, find the perpendicular line between the axis and where it's perpendicular to the line of force, as it's called, and it's just this distance times f. Okay? So this would be, you know, this distance r4, and this torque would be r4 times f4. For this one, uh, there it is for r2. For this one, I didn't really draw them well. There it is for R1. And for this one, just draw straight across. It's already there for R3. In each case, we're drawing it perpendicular. And if you have to, you extend the line to make it perpendicular. That's really all we were doing. We were going through the geometry of that. We did it twice for torques, and we did it uh, once. Uh, we did it three times for the torque. Okay? That's all that's really happening. So in the end, we added up all these torques, external torques. The only one that matters is this one, big R, MG, and these two cancel.